Before we get into when you started your career, I, I wanted to give a shout out to Tap Out. I know you're a Tap Out girl. I heard you were the first female MMA fighter to be sponsored by Tap Out. Um, yes, I was the first female MMA fighter to be on their show, and I think I was the first one with a full sponsorship for them. Yeah. Right on. And how does that make you feel? Oh, completely honored. What an amazing group of people. How did that affect you when Mask passed? Um, Mask was an amazing guy, and I don't, I don't want to get too choked up here, but his, uh, his passing really affected me too. He, um, what you don't see behind the scenes is how, how giving he is, what a kind person he is. Would call me after my fight, after I was on the show, just call me to see if I was okay, if I was training well, you know, what, what was up. And so, you know, he, I, I'd get called at 11 p.m. at night and be like, hey, yo, Jules, you know, and, and to, to have that gone all of a sudden, it, it was just, it was heartbreaking. Well, it's, it's hard, you know, I, I know I only had the privilege and the honor of knowing him a year. Um, but the year that I knew him, we stayed in touch, and uh, he really touched my life. You started your career as a Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu training in Indiana, and how many fights did you fight in Indiana? Um, I think in Indiana I had about 15 professional fights. Um, that was over the course of maybe three years. About, about 15 professional fights, I think. You got on that Showtime card, the first women's MMA fight on the Showtime That's right. card. How did that come about? Um, well, I was actually contacted from, by a friend of mine, and she said that she put my name up for it. And shortly thereafter, I heard from the promoters and everything. And I, um, I'm pretty naive or dumb, if you will, like when it comes to big deal fights. And I didn't realize the magnitude of the Showtime fight. Um, and, but, you know, getting to fight Miss Carano was amazing. Um, she's an incredible competitor, really, really nice girl. And what was very cool about it is that's where I met Greg Jackson, who was in Joey Villasenor's corner. And um, Greg and I made friends there, as, as well as Joey and I, and Greg later invited me out to join his team. So if I hadn't lost that fight, I probably, you know, who knows what would have happened. So losing that fight was one of the best things for my career because I, I got to completely relocate to Albuquerque, New Mexico. Talk to me about the move and the change. You picked everything up and you moved down here and you did it specifically to train with Winkle John and with Greg Jackson. And talk to me, was that scary? What, what went on in your mind there as you're... It was very scary. I mean, I left my boyfriend and my job and pretty much everything and I had maybe $100 in my bank account. Wow. Um, but, you know, I, I'd already spoken with Greg, and he and his wife were incredibly gracious and said, hey, you can live with us for a little bit until you get a job and get on your feet. He doesn't really do that that much anymore, just if people are watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Things have changed a little bit since then. But um, it, it was a scary thing, but it was something that I needed. And I think that, I, I think things do happen for a reason. And when pretty much everything in my life was telling me, get up and go, I, I got up and went. It, it was it was necessary for me to leave Indiana. Not because I had a wonderful team there, and they were just incredible. You know, an incredible instructor, great support, you know, great family. But I wasn't progressing in my life. I was stuck in kind of dead end jobs. I wasn't I wasn't moving forward as a fighter. You know, I had the fight of my life against Gina Carano when I was on Showtime. It was the biggest thing at that time. Obviously, it's you know, there's CBS now, and there's bigger things for women. But um, at that time, that was the biggest thing for women, and. I went back to work the next day and just, that was it. People were like, why do you have two black eyes? You know, <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no big deal. You know, it was just, it was, it was like everything, just everything seemed dead end to me there. And so to have the opportunity to be asked by Greg Jackson to come here, just, it opened a door. And um, it, I think that, you know, everybody makes one big journey in their life, and I think this was the journey that I needed to, to find myself, not to be lame. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really, you did one point in time, you fought three times in one night in a tournament and you took home that tournament. What was the name of the tournament? Um, it was the Hook and Shoot Grand Prix. Okay. And it was uh, the first 135 pound tournament um, that Jeff Osborne had in 2005 and it was amazing. It was amazing because two of those fights went the distance so I've got, I was about 30 minutes of fighting which for me, it was kind of a dream. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm one of those long fighters. I like the whole fight to go on. You know, not that I, I don't mind catching people. That's fun. That's great. <laughs> but <laughs> I really like wars, and I, I had two wars that night. Winning three fights in one night seems to be almost astronomical. Can you talk to me about the feeling that you had, you know, when you, when you won that tournament and you knew you had to win three fights in one <laughs> night to do it? I was exhausted. That's all I remember. I mean, that was that was about almost five years ago, four or five years ago. I was exhausted. Um, 
I do remember that. Uh, I remember they gave me the microphone after my last fight, which went to a decision. It was a split decision, so it was controversial to begin with. You know, split decisions, you never know who's going to get the win. And so uh, I was just like, they gave me the microphone. I don't even know what I said. I was like, bah, 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 bah. you know, I looked out there, and unfortunately for a women's tournament, you know, People support women's MMA, but in 2005, I think there's a little bit less support. So there were a scattering of people. I recognized a couple faces of my friends, you know, in the crowd. I'm like, hey! <laughs> you know, but it was it was an incredible feeling, but very, very exhausting. You've got another fight coming up against Katrina Allendale. Did I say that right? Yes, sir, Katrina and, Allendale. And that's, uh, when is that? That's um, That will be July 4th. And that is, it's called the Ultimate Freedom Throwdown. It's at Route, 60, Route 66 Casino in Albuquerque. And what do you know about your opponent coming up? I know that Katrina is incredibly well-rounded. Um, she trains at a very good gym. If I'm not mistaken, she's with Jake Shields, who everybody knows. His jiu-jitsu is just, just beautiful. And so uh, and I know that she's got good striking. So I'm expecting somebody who's going to try and take it to me every second of the fight. And I intend to do the same to her. You're really looking to put a win on the notch. What are, you, are, you, are there anything that you're doing different or that you're trying to really prepare for in, in coming up on this fight? Um, coming up on this fight? No, you know what? I, I'm doing everything the same. I, there's a process to becoming like what I like to think is the, you know, the, the prototype of a Jackson fighter. And I'm still in the process. You know, I, I think that there's a lot more wins ahead of me and there's probably a few losses. Fingers crossed that that doesn't happen. But um, I, 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 you know, as far as I'm concerned, if I can show that I've improved as a fighter, if I can show that I've improved under Greg Jackson and Mike Winkle Jones' tutelage, and that I'm more well-rounded, I'm bringing a fresher, stronger game every time I step in the cage, then I'm happy. In the cage.